Senator Grace Po, the creation of this subcommittee on the Comprehensive Infrastructure Development Master Plan was manifested in the Senate floor last March 8, 2023, to be presided by this representation. With that, this hearing of the Committee on Economic Affairs Subcommittee on the Comprehensive Infrastructure Development Master Plan joint with the Committees on Public Works and Finance is hereby called to order. I would like to uh, acknowledge that some, there are uh, simultaneous hearings going on because we will be on break already on Wednesday, so we will just wait for other centers to come later. But uh, we'd like to acknowledge your online presence, Senator Bongo. Thank you, sir, for uh, joining us. So we have three bills in our agenda today. For today's hearing, Senate Bill Number 158, filed by this representation. Senate Bill Number 1987, filed by Senator Joel Villanueva. And Senate Bill Number 439, filed by Senator Mark Villar. I would like to ask the Committee Secretary to acknowledge your our resource persons present for today, for today's hearing. Thank you, Senator. Good morning, everyone. For the National Economic and Development Authority, we would like to acknowledge the presence of ASEC Jonathan L. Uy and Ms. Christina Mortega. For the Department of Budget and Management, we have USEC. Attorney Carlos M. Borja and Ms. Joy Rico. For the Department of Finance, we have ASEC Neil Adrian Cabiles. For the Department of Public Works and Highways, we have USEC Maria Catalina Cabral and Director Rodrigo de los Reyes. Also with us, Director Ramon Ariola. For the Department of Transportation, we have USEC Timothy Jan Batan, as well as ASEC Enrique Antonio Esquivel. For the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Executive Director Doris Gacho and Attorney Isa Fiel Arsenal. For the Department of Energy, we have Assistant Director William Quinto. Yes. And for the Department of Agriculture, we have Engineer Juana T. Tapel and Iris De Vera. For the Department of Tourism, we have USEC Shalimar Hofer Tamano and ASEC Christopher Morales. For the DICT, the Department of Information and Communications Technology, we have USEC Angelo Nuestro and ASEC Asidao, Herson Asidao, and ASEC Philip Varilla. For the DSWD, Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have ASIC, ASEC Gary Politico, Ms. Mary Joy Capistrano. For the Department of Health, we have OIC Division Chief, Dr. Maria Between Reyes. For the Department of Human Settlements, yes, sir. Attorney Alvin Giolagon. For the Central Bank, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Ms. Roselle Manalo of the Department of Economic Research and Mr. Robert Roberto Quintos. For MINDA, we have Secretary Maria Belena Costa. For the PISAM, the Power Sector Assets and Liabilities Management Corporation, we have Ms. Rowena Magpusao Tolentino. 
For the Public-Private Partnership Center, we have Director Feroisa Francisco Concordia and Ms. Millie Jane Rigo. For the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we have Mr. George T. Barcelon. For the Philippine Partnership for the Development of Human Resources in Rural Areas, all FILDRA, we have Ms. Katlea Itong. And for the Export Development Council, the chairperson of the Networking Committee on Transport and Logistics, we have Dr. Enrico Basilio. Uh, if I miss your names, kindly introduce yourself, sir, madam, here on the table. Okay, that's all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you to our committee secretary. First, uh, the chair would like to give his opening statement, and likewise, after my opening statement, uh, our majority leader, Senator Joel Villanueva, will all, also have his opening statement, but it will be inserted to the records. First of all, uh, this humble representation, I'd like to thank our Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri and the Chairperson of the Senate Committee on Economic Affairs and Public Services, Senator Grace Pope, for giving us the opportunity to establish this subcommittee. It is a great honor and privilege to be entrusted with the responsibility to take the initiative in the formulation of a comprehensive master plan. Infrastructure is vital to foster economic development when countries invest in infrastructure. It leads to higher foreign and local investments, job opportunities, and efficient government services. For the longest time, our infrastructure spending lags behind our ASEAN neighbors. We barely reached the ideal 5% of the GDP for infrastructure. In fact, nasa 2% lang tayo through the years. This change during the term of our President uh, Duterte when he implemented the Build, Build, Build program with the help of uh, other secretaries, no? uh, big ticket projects, especially in the railway sector, were included in the pipeline. Some is now currently being implemented. As someone who advocates and considers railway as the backbone of the economy, this made me very hopeful. However, not all infrastructure withstands the ever-changing political and business climate. Change in leadership in government agencies, change in administration every six years, affects our infrastructure development, which in turn affects our economic growth. I'm very happy that President Bongo Marcos has been very consistent with his pronouncements that infrastructure development is a priority in his administration, so there is continuity. We are here today to help our government craft a long-term infrastructure development master plan by providing legislative guidelines to ensure continuity of high-quality integrated infrastructure projects. A master plan is the mass, is the plan of all plans. We could visualize it as a piece of detailed document outlining and enumerating our plans, projects, and programs for at least the next 50 years. All plans and programs, no matter how simple or complex, should be built in accordance with the master plan or blueprint. It should be comparable to a constitution of fundamental law before a single ground is broken or a single hammer is lifted. The first thing that we should be, should be considered is whether a project or program complies with that is required by a master plan. Sa mahabang panahon po ay naging maikli ang ating pagtanaw sa pagpapaulad ng ating bayan. Patsi-patsi at bara-bara naging sistema ng ating pagpapatayo. Kung basta paggamot sa sakit, band-aid solutions lamang ang ating ginagawa. Imbes na gamutin, ang cancer ay nakukontenta tayo sa pag paunang lunas o first aid. May karamdaman ng ating programa infrastruktura at naiimpeksyon na ang ating ekonomiya. Sala sa labat ang mga kawad ng kuryente sa mga poste, ang mga poste naman kung hindi nasa gitna ng kalsada dahil inabutan ng road widening projects ay napalibutan naman ng drainage. Ang kaparehong drainage naman na ito ay madalas barado dahil sa tambak ng basura na dumadaloy dito mula sa Makonolo at Estero. Dulot ito ng hindi maayos na waste management system at na nagbubunga ng mga pagbabaha. Wala rin humpay na pag at pagbuta sa matitino at maayos naman na kalsada. Hindi organisado at madalas na walang koordinasyon sa pagitan ng mga ahensya ng road projects. Ang resulta, mabigat na abdaloy ng trapiko na nagiging sanhi ng pagkakalugi ng iba't ibang mga negosyo. 
nakakapanghinayang kasi nakikita natin yung mga kalyeng maayos, sinisira para ayusin ulit. Pero marami namang kalye na dapat yun ang mga nalalagyan. The web of complicated problems that we encounter every day is brought about by poor planning or the lack thereof. Crafting a master plan is laying the foundation for industrial and economic development. Picture this as a blueprint in achieving progress, a map that will lead us to prosperity. Kung may may guguhit po tayo na maayos na blueprint na pinagtutulungan ng ating mga eksperto, matitiyak po natin na magpalit man ang Pangulo o administrasyon ay may iisang plano na tayong susundan, may iba man ang engineer, yun, forma o karpintero ay may pangkalahatang gabay na pagbubuo ng mga pangarap. Probably ay... ay uh, This is a result of our political system as well. No, yung three-year term and six-year term with the term limit. Most of our public officials, even presidents, I would say, are only concentrated on the medium, short and medium term. Ah, yun ang pagkukula natin yung long-term planning. So I'm hoping that with this measure. That would seek to address this problem. Na meron na tayong infrastructure development plan, a blueprint that we will follow in the next 50 to 100 years. That whoever, as any other government official, meron na tayong sinusundang plano. They will have their own. No doubt, they will have their own pet programs. But infrastructure needs 30, 50, even 100 years of planning and execution. Kaya po siguro tayo na pag-iwanan ng iba nating mga karating bansa because of this uh, situation. No? Hindi lang poor planning, but probably more of because of the political um, system. Nang nasa ano lang tayo, three years and six years, kaya madalas, eh, si, uh, medium term, short to medium term lang ating problema. Hopefully with this time, by, by, by making this uh, possible, pagpasa natin to. Now, the North-South commuter line is already in progress. Hopefully, the Manila, Metro Manila subway, sana rin po. Sumunod na yung South Hall uh, uh, Railway and the uh, North and Mindanao Railway for the first time in history, Panay. And I think we really need all of these things to spread economic development. opportunities are Metro Manila, Cebu, or Dabao. Kaya nagsisiksikan lahat dito sa mga metropolis. So we have to spread out the development, create growth areas, create growth nodes, and opportunities also in the provinces. And I think, especially yun, dito si former councilor, no, Yusek Maria Mabel of uh, Minda, I think this will be the last, this will be the path to lasting peace in Mindanao. We spread out the development. Kasi po, nagkakaroon ng kaguluhan doon noon in areas that have no prior, ano, lack of opportunity. Halos walang hanap buhay. So with the, hopefully, talaga i-push na natin talaga lahat ito and make the Mindanao Railway System and now by creating growth areas and growth development areas a, a, a reality. Today, we not only make efforts to craft a master plan, but we forge a commitment among ourselves to build a few better future for generations to come. Maraming salamat po. Now, let us hear. Again, um, we are waiting for our my, our colleagues because, there, as I mentioned, there are simultaneous hearings going on. Senator Bongo and uh, the, I, the chair would like to acknowledge Senators Bongo and Senator Delosa or both online who are probably on the way also. So we'll just wait for them. Thank you for for joining us so that uh, that means that you have your quorum already. Anyway, um, likewise, as I mentioned earlier, our majority leader, um, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, has also an opening statement because he filed a similar bill uh, on infrastructure, in on, on comprehensive master plan infrastructure development that would be inserted into the records. At this juncture, we can uh, medyo marami-rami tayo, ano, no? Uh, we'll try to make this, uh, to finish this by lunchtime, no? Uh, to the uh, committee, but probably we will also
recognize each one of you to just give the summary para po matapos tayo. And most likely, we'll have another hearing for this. And um, the, ang maganda na po na isama yata ito in one of the priority measures by the administration. So hopefully, maging katotohan na. Okay? So with that, again, we, we, we would like, uh, the chair would like to uh, acknowledge first from NEDA. And then from DOF, syempre, unahin natin yung mga funding agencies. NEDA, DOF, DBM, and then doon po sa mga mag execute DOTR, DPWH, DOT, and then uh, sa in Energy, DOE, PISAL. No? So in that order, tapos mamaya naman yung NIA, the ICT. Of NEDA, uh, may I inform the committee that uh, the good chairman that uh, presently the position paper requested by the committee is now being reviewed by the NEDA secretary. So we will be sending as uh, instructed, no, as directed by the committee. But uh, in essence, we support the. A comprehensive infrastructure part of the NEDA board through the infrastructure committee. We have been uh, doing this exercise of coming up with master plans on a sectoral level, and uh, therefore we support the initiative of the legislative, particularly the Senate, towards institutionalizing this infrastructure master plan. Comments, Mr. Chair, and we support the initiative. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the. Uh, for the support of the uh, NEDA for this uh, for these measures that are uh, in uh, this morning. Next for the UF. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, thank you uh, for inviting us for this meeting. Um, for the DOF, uh, yeah, we, we have done already uh, some review of the proposed bills and we are coming up um, with a position paper which we would be submitting. Um, generally, the DOF um, is supportive of the intent to have a co comprehensive and a coordinated uh, um, infrastructure plan that would also assure the continuity of uh, these projects through uh, different administrations. Um, as preliminary comments on the uh, proposed bills, um, we we noticed that there is an initial list of core infrastructure projects, um, which we would suggest um, that uh, this would be updated, include a particular projects that are actually already under implementation. So the position paper would include these projects that are already in implementation, which um, we um, recommend for exclusion. And just as a heads up, um, I think the bill um, specifically, specifically allows blended financing, so it may be necessary. As amendment passed by the uh, House of Representatives and is pending under the second economic. So that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, observations are noted. Um, thank you for to the OF for also for the support. Uh, for uh, for DBM Attorney Carlos Bora. Mr. Chair, hi. Yes, ma'am. Are you sec Maria Francesca de Rosario? Yes. Um, for the master plan bill, yes. Um, for the master plan bill, uh, we interpose no objection to the proposed legislative measures. Um, subject to the comments of um, finalized by our office of the secretary, uh, but the uh, finalized by our office of the secretary, uh, but that we um uh, we also are proposing to as uh, as also mentioned by the DOF, uh, we propose certain infrastructure projects um to be reviewed and and uh, infrastructure projects further review and and um, maybe not make um, future projects especially in addition because technologies change um, from time to time so we have to 
ensure that their and their to structure bank so we and also certain the identify critical or define what are those so in terms of prioritization because 30 years is is quite long um we uh we also want to to ensure that um the frameworks of the mtff um pp pdp are also um, aligned with with the 30 year plan um that's it thank you sir thank you uh you said maria francesca del Sario. of course you'll take note of that but uh Again, uh, this bill will still go under technical working group and will still go uh, the due process of uh, uh, going to the plenary you know, for discussion to perfect. So we will take note of all the reservations. But uh, also, be re um, siguro ang ano lang natin dito, I hope that everybody would get the direction that hindi lang po infrastructure, it's not only railway, sinama na rin po natin siya, energy, um water that which are now all uh we have to give attention already you no know, because of climate change and everything it's not raining anymore where it was supposed to rain yung mga dams dito sa manetra manila the, our population more than doubled so there are a lot of things that we have to take into consideration that really needs long-term planning. Hindi pwede ito, di ba? You say, hindi, hindi kaya ito ng 5, 10 years eh. We have to have a master plan. That, ito yung, hindi yung tulad ngayon, nagahabol tayo. Tulad ng mga dam na dapat, being a dam, 85, 1985 pa. Ngayon, it's 2023. Wala pa tayong second source of water in Metro Manila. Di ba? Uh, rail, the railway, for example, was uh, as, uh, on a hindsight. I remember during President Estrada's time, your North Rail and South Rail was already should be, was to be prioritized. That was 1998. And here we are, 2023, ngayon pa lang nagsisimula ang NSCR. So there are a lot of things that I, uh, energy, for example, uh, BNPP was supposed to be online 1986. And now uh, we are already nine, naging controversial, but uh, the whole world is going for nuclear and, and renewable. Here we are still under coal pa rin tayo na very uh, environmentally and uh, un unsafe and also um, expensive. No? So these are the things that we really have. Uh, that is the intent of the bill. No? That hindi naman siguro in details but generally at least yung blueprint that we will have something to follow in a lot of things. No? Housing, uh, uh, tourism, pati na rin po sa, ano, dapat po yung housing, for example, they should, um, for example, yung housing should be an already, kung saan dadan ng infra, nandun di po yung housing, di ba? Hindi tulad ngayon, kung saan mura lupa, kahit na saan lupa-lup, kahit walang signal, na walang kamiasnan, eh para lang magawa, para masabing mayroong production gagawin, pero walang tumitira. So, kaya ano tayo eh? Kumbaga, chapsoy, hindi, that's why I think while we still have time, we need to have a master plan right now. Okay? So next, uh, we move to the uh, agencies that, that is tasked to execute all of these uh, plans. We go first to the OTR, Yusek Timothy Jan Batan, probably can, uh, uh, the, the agency's position on uh, the comprehensive master plan. Uh, good morning, po, Mr. Chair. Uh, the department po is uh, supportive of the development of a comprehensive infrastructure uh, development master plan, uh, particularly po the item that falls within the DOTR scope, which is the Transportation and Logistics Infrastructure Program. Uh, Mr. Chair, we will be uh, submitting a position paper on this, but uh, perhaps in broad strokes, as mentioned by the chair, uh, tama na po yung uh, band aid solutions, and we need the uh, big solutions for our big problems. And successfully implementing or rolling out these uh, big projects would require sufficient project preparation and master planning. Uh, we would like to note, lang po, Mr. Chair, that in our PDP 2023 to 2028, one of the identified strategies is the development of a national transportation master 
plan, which would uh, very well coincide po with the proposed uh, comprehensive infrastructure development uh, master plan. And finally, po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the DOTR has been doing an inventory of all of its master plans for the last from 2020 to date across our four sectors in the aviation, maritime, rail, and road sectors. And we have also been doing, Mr. Chair, a gap analysis. Uh, for instance, Mr. Chair, in the aviation uh, sector, we have an aviation master plan that covers the period 2006 to 2025. And we have been looking at, Mr. Chair, how much of those or how many of those recommendations in 2006 have been implemented to date. In our maritime sector, sector, Mr. Chair, we have a master plan covering the period 2004 to 2024, and we have also been doing a similar gap analysis. And uh, we will be sharing, uh, Mr. Chair, all of this uh, with the committee and uh, what the department is intending to do and is actually already working on is to uh, start working on our updated master plans, which perfectly coincides, uh, Mr. Chair, with this uh, initiative on the Comprehensive Infrastructure Development Master Plan. Uh, thank Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. You just said, uh, Timmy Batan, Timothy Batan, who have worked with uh, in uh, a lot of uh, budget hearings no? by pushing for the uh, uh, major infrastructure development and uh, the DOTR. Anyway, precisely that's what re we really what we really intend to do no? to have all of these plans. Na kahit na sino administration, mabago man, dapat yun talaga sinusunod natin. Anyway, uh, next, of course. Um, one of the biggest agencies um, that will be very crucial in the infrastructure development, um, DPWH, you uh, say Kathy Cabral, ma'am, you are recognized. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, Mr. Uh Mr. Chair, uh, the Department of Public Works and Highways, as you correctly pointed out, is the biggest construction and engineering arm of the government. And we are strongly supporting the preparation, finalization, formulation, and institutionalization of a comprehensive infrastructure development master. When we speak, Mr. Chair, of an infrastructure, we don't mean. When we speak, Mr. Chair, of an infrastructure, we don't only speak of, you know, road. Uh, there, as you correctly pointed out, Mr. Chair, there are five sectors of infrastructure. There are five, five sectors of infrastructure, and they are, of course, the transport, the uh, pending Department of Water Resources, pending bill, both in houses, both in the two houses, of the, which is also very important in crafting a master plan that will provide direction not only on infrastructure but also in the regulatory part, Mr. Chair. And then you have energy, which, as again correctly pointed out, uh, we have not we have to ensure that. Energy, we are uh, secured uh, in providing power and energy. Uh, and then we have ICT, the connectivity, the in, um, ICT, because we are also universally connected, not only uh, through land, but digitally. Mr. Chair, under, even under the new normal. And finally, social services. Uh, that's where the housing, hospitals, and other social uh, classrooms, Mr. Chair. And those are very vital. And this has been greatly discussed in the Philippine Development Plan. But correctly pointed out that the um, Department of Public Works and Highways, we are preparing master plans for transport and flood control, but we have to ensure that these projects are consistent and harmonized with other agencies' programs and projects. Uh, for example, Mr. Chair, we are converging with the converging with the Department of Tourism. Twelve roads that are accessing tourism destinations are improved, even if they are, you know, they are not national roads because primarily public works and highways are in charge of national roads. But we have to ensure connectivity. Mr. Chair, I mean, uh, out of 200 plus thousand kilometers of road network nationwide, only about 33,000 plus kilometers are national roads. But all the local roads, uh, Mr. Chair, like um, access to tourism, ac access to food security, like farm to market roads, should be connected as well. And this should be consistent, harmonized with other agencies. So definitely, Mr. Chair, we are very supportive. In fact, we are even also discussing this at the House. Uh, there's also a similar uh, bill in the House uh, initiated by the Chair of the House Committee on Public Works that identifies big-ticket, high-impact projects of uh, 
government and many of those are under DPWH. Um, last second week of March, I think, or third, first week of March, NEDA board approved more than 190 plus infrastructure flagship projects. Uh, these are a result of master plan and feasibility studies, and 63 of these are DPWH projects. So certainly, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we will be very supportive in coming out not only of the law but in the implementing rules and regulation so that we will be able to come up with a blueprint that will transcend not just the six-year term of uh, the current administration but as you pointed out long-term master plan and uh, certainly Mr. Chair we are in unison here in making sure that this 30-year or 50-year as you pointed out should be developed and crafted under this uh, chairmanship, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Yuse Cabral. Uh, you have raised several points there. No, tama kayo. No, um, uh, ilalay national government roads. But uh, for example, if you talk about tourism, um, that's our low hanging fruit. One of our low hanging fruits. Uh, in that's why Thailand has been getting the bulk of most of the European market and the other markets because they have really in invested heavily on infrastructure. Diba po yung tama ba ko, Yusek Cabral, na yung kanilang flyover, yung ano nila pong uh, buti na lang, nagkaroon tayo ng uh, skyway, but before, pinagyan, malaki na natin nine, ilang 9 kilometers, we have, yung kanila more than 1 hour ka nang tumatakbo, magkapatong pa rin. Yung kanilang railway system, it's easy to get from the airport going to Phuket, for example, very uh, seamless. Eh, dito napakahirap. So yung connectivity, probably we can also talk about that, no? From the airport, going to the selected uh, tourism sites because that would really bring in uh, investments. Sige, Yusek Cabral. Mr. Chair, may I add, in addition to that, we also support your the intention of developing regional growth, not only urban development, because as you pointed out, we already have already congested metropo metropolitan centers. Uh, the bulk of the infrastructure are here, the big ticket projects. So we have to support regional development if we want to, you know, uh, make sure of an equitable growth to support the GDP growth, Mr. Chair. Well, that is really correct because sabi ko kanina, concentration of development is Petrobilia, Cebu, and Dabao, if you would compare to the other areas. Because, but because of infra, railways, highways, uh, ports, and airports that will create growth areas in other provinces as well. I think that's the only way, that's the only way we can um, decongest Metro Mila Cebu Daba by creating growth areas and growth opportunities in other areas as well. And I think um, based on the lessons of Thailand and other Malaysia and other of our um, Southeast Asia neighbors, their success is really they invested heavily on infrastructure since 90s yata, no? Talagang grabe na investment nila. So, if it's 1990s and now we are 2023, so I think we are probably 25, ilang years kaya, ilang years kaya, Yusek Cabral, Yusek Batan, how many years are, are we behind our neighbors? May 20 years siguro, no? Marami tayong hahabulin, but Hanggat may oras pa, I'm hoping that we could have this passed. Okay? So, thank you, uh, Yusek Cabral. DOT, Yusek Shalimar Tamano. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. The Department of Tourism manifests its support to the objective of Senate Bills number 158, 439, and 1987. The Senate Bills seek the enactment of a law that will ensure the provision of an efficient and integrated infrastructure system which will promote sustainable development and inclusive economic growth across the country. The objective of the Senate Bills is consistent with Section 3 of Republic Act Number 9593, otherwise known as the Tourism Act of 2009, which provides that it is the objective of the state to achieve a balance in tourism development between urban and rural areas in order to spread the benefits of tourism and contribute to poverty alleviation, better access to infrastructure, and to a reduction in regional imbalances. The Department is exerting earnest efforts to promote sustainable tourism in lesser known areas in the country. Thus, the formulation and establishment of an infrastructure 
plan or program which will strengthen transport and other infrastructure in support of tourism of tourism will be vital in the achievement of DOT's goal of promoting tourism in lesser known areas. The DOT will likewise submit its official position paper on the Senate bills as soon as possible. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you said Shalimar, uh, now that our secretary is very also is very progressive, no? I, uh, it's a good time that we can identify mga, uh, not the usual tourism sites, but the new hidden treasures that uh, that can at least we can already prepare in the future maganda pilipinas eh marami lang um i is, i think this infrastructure is really vital so that uh, sabi ni Jose Cabral kanina hindi lahat na national highway but we have to put um uh infrastructure in tourism sites no that are have the potential pero dapat siguro ano na well it's a policy decision magon this time with the master plan, we will now identify yung talagang tourism areas at ang potential. Kasi minsan, there are areas na sinasabing ay nihiga ng uh, pinapadeclare na tourism sites, tinalagyan ng tourism uh, centers na hindi naman talaga tourism areas. Okay, isama na natin to para talagang maayos. Diba? Okay, next for DOE which is also very vital no? because uh, of course we cannot really industrialize and develop not unless we have cheap energy cheap and clean source of energy so i would like to hear, hear the doe's uh, uh position assistant Sec assistant director william quinto of doe good morning pa i understand I'm there's sick. an ongoing committee on energy kaya nandun sa mga usec at asec yes, so siguro kay ano please uh state your uh, agency's position Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Department of Energy fully supports the draft national policy as it promotes synergy on energy initiatives, particularly on critical infrastructure projects. DOE also recommend enhanced complementation of energy projects with other government agencies' projects to avoid overlapping in terms of project sites. We also propose to increase the role of regional development councils and the government-owned uh, and controlled corporations in the formulation of master plans to promote coherent projects at the national and local level. We also envision to consider the preparation of regionalized mapping of all key national projects identified in the infrastructure sector master plans this helps to address gaps in the project siting. We also want to consider the integration of infrastructure resilience in the drop policy to safeguard government infrastructure and development investment. Formulation of technical working group may be considered in the drafting of the sectoral master plans to ensure a holistic approach and obtain full support of partner government agencies. Mr. Chair, we will submit the detailed position on this master plan soon. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, we'll have another say, another hearing probably for this because the water agencies are not present today. Uh, it's very important. No? Kasi po yung uh, Jose Cabral, ang paggawa ng mga dam, malatagal yan. Di ba? It's very important. While we are already in the process of uh, establishing a Department of Water, kailangan maisama rin sa infra to eh. Dahil matagalan ng dam, malalaki infra yan eh. So, I'm hoping that they uh, send the water agencies will be present next hearing. So, sa DOE naman, probably if we can submit uh, both medium and long-term plans, ano na bang position natin? We go nuclear, we go... Renewable, I understand, open up ang lahat eh, no? So, at least we have an understanding on what the direction will be and we'll include it already in the master plan. If you can submit. Yeah, so it goes well with other agencies po. Pakisama na rin po yung medium term plan, specifically on infrastructure. Uh, Siyempre, aside from the long term, isama na rin po natin. Okay, next. Um, for Pasalm, nandito pa ang Pasalm. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Yes, Engineer Arnold Francisco. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, for Pisalama, uh, Mr. Chair, we fully support the subject proposed uh, legislative, 
legislative measures and interposes no objection to the key provisions of the measures for the formulation and institutionalization of comprehensive infrastructure and development master plan mr chair the proposed bill will serve as a guide in making strategic decisions and investments in infrastructure covering transportation energy water telecommunication and other critical infrastructure sectors for the build 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 program it contains clear objectives and targets that will strengthen the government's flagship infrastructure projects the build 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 program as well by providing a dedicated source of funding that determining the roles of agencies and other institutional arrangements and streamlining the regulatory and approval processes for infrastructure projects the implementation of infrastructure programs in the country will be expedited under the energy infrastructure mr chair pisang will be pursuing the rehabilitation of agus polangi hydro power power plant complex and this this project was considered a flagship project of the past administration and mr chair we already submitted our comment uh, for this uh, legit legislative bills dated march 16 2023 in your office mr chair thank you thank you engineer arnold francisco Pesal. next now we go to Walai water resources uh, infrastructure program so we'll call them next hearing uh next will be the ict ayusek uh, angelo nuestro is here thank you sir for being with us uh probably your your position your department your department's uh, position on this measure Thank you, Mr. Chair. The department is supportive with the comprehensive master plan. In general, there are no significant comments or objections and would like to request that the ICT's plans to be considered for inclusion in the master plan. The ICT is currently preparing and reviewing our position paper and would submit it immediately. I would like to add that uh, there are three international organizations such as the world bank world economic forum and itu independently made studies that with 10 percent increase in internet connectivity it translates to somewhere between to 1.2 and 1.5 percent increase in gdp also another study uh I won't already I won't mention the organization that made the study because it might be subserving to them estimates that the benefit of the PLCN PLCN is the submarine cable from LA to Baler they estimate that there will be 34 billion US dollars increase in economic activity for four years perhaps we can take advantage of this by making our master plan or plans around this as well uh, with internet connectivity uh, there is there's the next level to uh, improve such as uh, industry development education healthcare e-governance financial inclusion the judiciary system jobs upskilling freelancing and startups cultural and arts and also e-commerce thank you mr chair Thank you, uh, Yusek Angelo Desto. And indeed, in um, IT now plays a very vital role. No? So infrastructure, that eh, ano lang eh, talagang uh, infra major infrastructure roads, bridges, railways, airports. But now, kailangan na talaga kasama ang uh, for business to grow. Uh, the IT aspect. Thank you for your uh, department's uh, support for this. Uh, Measure and be so dapat kailangan talaga siya in our master plan. Next is uh, for the social infrastructure, briefly, so that the check can ask some questions later. The SWD, as a Gary Politico, is here. Uh, the should Attorney Galvin Giolagon, then DTI, the OH, and DepEd. So briefly lang po siguro. We can start with the SWD, Asik Gary. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, the SWD is uh, in full support of this uh, formulation of the uh, infrastructure development plan and build build program. Uh, we have already requested our legislative bill review committee members 
for the position paper. And although it is a economic um, affairs, uh, rest assured that DSWD will provide uh, social protection on whatever implementation of the other agencies regarding this infrastructure program. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Asik Gary. Politiko, tamang bakay, bagay na bagay kayo sa DSWD. Politiko kayo. <laughs> anyway, uh, for Department of uh, Human Settlements and Urban Development, uh, of course, this is very close to my heart. I uh, authored the creation of this uh, department. Attorney Albin Yulagon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development would like to express its full support the proposed legislations as they provide opportunities for economic growth, job creation, and infrastructure development. These bills uh, can also strengthen the implementation of the Pambansang Pabahay para sa Pilipino program or 4PH of the Mar current Marcos administration being championed by the SUD as they cover social infrastructure projects, programs, and public housing. We'll just submit our position, Mr. Chair. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Attorney Alvin. Likewise, as I mentioned, sana po yung DSD, the issue this time, NHA, would go kung saan po ang infrastructure, nandun din na yung housing. Diba? Pag, kung saan yung infra, for every province, for sure, merong commercial areas na yan. Diba? Kung saan yung train station or airport, magkakaroon din ng uh, industrial parks, food terminals. Dapat yung housing component should be there also. Yes, Mr. Chair. Para we won't go back to the to the wrong system before. Na kung saan pinakamura lupa, dati ganun eh. Di ba? Kung saan pinakamura, doon bibili. Para lang masabi may development, we will force people, beneficiaries to move. After three months, six months, iwanan. Because there's no livelihood, there's no services. Kaya nga human settlements and urban development, all components should be complete. Access to healthcare, education, and transportation. So, dapat maging ganun. Thank you to DSUD. And I'm hoping that the old agencies of DSUD are now already working under, under one roof. That's the intention, di ba? Yan eh, NHA nyo, mukhang ibang direksyon. Dapat maayos yun. Diba? Noted, That's not part of our intent of uh, passing the law. Kailangan we move in one direction. Okay. Next will be DTI, DOH, DepEd, DTI, Executive Director, Doris Tacho. Okay, please identify yourself for the committees. Attorney Aisa Phil Arsenal. Thank you, Attorney. Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines. Uh, the DTTII also through the Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines manifests its full support to the enactment of the 30-year comprehensive development plan. This will also be in conjunction with the implementation of our Philippine Construction Industry Roadmap for 2020 to 2030. We will be providing our position paper also for this bill. Uh, currently, it's still with the Bureau of Trade and Industry Policy Research, but we will also be, this is also in conjunction with the uh, proposed 30-year infrastructure development plan currently pending in the Congress. So we will be supporting this fully, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. Uh, at least for at least, uh, uh, giving your uh, agency or your department a position. Next for DOH, um, Dr. Maria Between Reyes and DepEd, and then DepEd. Tapos nandito na rin po si Deputy Administrator of uh, DA and NIA, Char Sulaik. So we'll, be, we'll go back to you, sir, later. So sa, next will be DOH and then DepEd. DOH po, Dr. Maria Between Reyes. Magandang umaga po, Dr. Between Reyes from, from the Department of Health. So... The Department of Health recognizes and lauds the noble intention of your um, Senate bills number 439 and 159 seeking to establish and develop a 30-year national infrastructure program. Uh, with that, we would like to ensure that the infrastructure projects are consistent with the goals of universal health care and align with the DOH's Philippine Health Facility Development Plan of 2020 to 2040 
which serves as the health sector's macro plan for closing health facility access gaps, ensuring functional healthcare provider networks, increasing accessibility to specialized care, and institutionalizing climate resilience in infrastructure. The DOH will provide its further comments and recommendations through its official position paper. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Dr. Between Reyes, likewise, dapat masama yan dito, no? And last the quest. Uh, especially with the president's uh, pronouncement of uh, including specialty centers, regional hospitals, improvement of uh, kailangan isama sa master plan. Kasi alam nyo, pag pumasok ang politiko dito, di ba, may congressman, senador, governor, mayor, para lang sabihin, meron silang hospital, it's not easy to have an hospital. Dapat yan strategic and scientific ang study. So I'm hoping to have it included kasi napansin ko ang dami hong nagpapatayo gusto maglagay ng hospital and my experience as mayor as chief executive it's not easy to to run a hospital di ba kailangan niyan talaga and that's one of the challenges of the Man Garcia Mandanas doctrine because of the devolution nung una maganda tuwang-tuwa yung mga uh, mga LGU sabi wow lalaki ang share namin sa NTA o ira noon Hindi nila alam yung services that will be devolved ay hindi pala kaya, hindi capacitated. So probably we can include that very vital yung sa health especially. Ayun, talagang alam ko hindi kakayanin niyan unless you're a city, first class municipality or a city. 'Di ba? Napakahirap niyan. I remember when I was San Juan's already a city and nandito sa Metro Manila, 30-40% of our budget goes to the hospital alone. So that needs scientific study, may stack tayo, Health Technology Assessment Council, they are the ones who are in authority that can say kung saan ilalagay yung specialty centers, kung saan lalagay yung, uh, yung mga regional hospitals because this and other hospitals. So we need that infrastructure para again, sabi ko nga, pag pumasok ang politiko rito, syempre gusto nila lahat, may, may specialty centers sila lahat sa region. Hindi naman kaya yon. We cannot afford that. We can put only in in strategic areas and i think yung pong doon makakatulong yung health technology as assessment council uh, dr reyes pakisabi po yung sa h stack probably they can help very much in identifying which areas ang uh, kailangan talaga ilagay yung specialty centers and other health facilities yes mr chair um naka outline na rin po ito sa ating philippine health facility development Aba. plan Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Kasi talagang pag pumasok dito ang mga politiko, di ba, Yusek Cabral, mahirap eh, mahirap tumanggi. Kayo rin, wala naman kayong magagawa dahil ang budget nila ay hawak nyo. Kaya lang, we have to be true. We have to be honest. No? Tulad nalang siguro si Yusek Shalemar Tamano, alam niya ito. May mga pinadideclare na tourism sites, humihingi ng tourism centers, eh nasa gitna ng mga palayan at wala namang makikita maganda. Di ba? So now we have to identify also siguro yung tourism, kung anong areas talaga that we have to put the infrastructure. Okay? Yung mga politiko, mahirap talaga. Kaya kailangan may master plan. Mga tulad namin, huwag yung makikinig doon. Meron. Siyempre, iniisip ko kung paano ako popogi. Di ba? Joke lang po, pero marami natamaan. Pero to. <laughs> but if we really need to move forward and to make sure and efficient ang paggastos ng ating pong budget, we have to identify these areas. Bawa, yung talaga magandang tourism sites. Di ba? Yung pong, uh, yung talagang areas na masatasang concentration ng renal disease o iba-iba, cardio, doon na natin lalagay mga health, um, heart centers and other uh, kidney centers. no? Hindi po kung saan-saan lang. So, kailan to scientific. Next, um, we call on DepEd Engineer Annabel. Pangan. Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, aligned with the matatag agenda of the Vice President and Secretary of the Department of Education, the provision of adequate, safe, and secure learning spaces for our school children is one of the priority of the department. Thus, the passing of this bill will support this objective of the department. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, uh, thank you. We need also the department I love because uh, I read recently that DepEd is still really uh, struggling to get to complete yung shortage ng, uh, ng classrooms. No? 
talagang hindi tayo maka-cope up with the population growth. Eh, kahit ilang klase ng pag-awa, kulang pa rin. So, we need that also, yung master plan, in the master plan. Next, uh, for DA engineer, wanna tapel? Ma'am? For DA po, no? Okay, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair. The Department of Agriculture strongly supports the intent of the proposed measure to establish a long-term and comprehensive infrastructure master plan that will ensure continuity in the development and implementation of the projects geared towards sustainable and inclusive socioeconomic development in the country. Infrastructure development has, in, has been identified as one of the strategies to advance agriculture as progressive infrastructure in logistics are keys to improve the linkages from producers to both domestic and export market. Thus, we appreciate the recognition of the importance of agri-fishery sector in its inclusion in the priority areas in the formulation of the infrastructure master plan and the Senate Bill 158, as well as emphasis on food security, infrastructure under the infrastructure policies in strategies and Senate Bill 1987. We view that the policies and strategies in the post bill, proposed bill are consistent with the modernization strategies of the department, such as technology innovations, including digital agriculture, the drone transport system, as included in the Philippine Food Logistic Plan, mechanization and infrastructure investment, climate change adaptation and mitigation measures, and food safety and regulations. The department will submit the official position paper together with its specific comments and recommendation for the consideration of the honorable chairperson and the members of the committee. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga muli. Thank you, uh, Engineer Juan Atapel. Next, uh, siguro balikan na natin po si uh, Deputy Administrator ng DA NIA, Cesar Sulaik. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the National Irrigation Administration, Mr. Chair is very supportive on the Comprehensive Infrastructure Development uh, Master Plan uh, for the development of the Water Resources Infrastructure Program. Mr. Chair, po, to formulate the Long Range Water Resources Master Plan and multi-purpose project that will optimize the development and use of water resources potential for irrigation, water, power, supply, and uh, flood control. Mr. Chair, the National Irrigation Master Plan, NMIP of 2020 to 2030, is already in place that is consistent and serves as support to Senate Bill Number 439 for the year, for 30-year National Infrastructure Program that includes irrigation infrastructure, Mr. Chair. And uh, we were going to... Uh, give the copy of the National Irrigation Master Plan, Mr. Chair, to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cesar. So like, again, as noted, I think uh, we will have another second hearing. This time we will concentrate on the water agencies, the LUA, uh, MWSS, uh, ano pa ba? NIA, and other agencies, kasi nga, I'm very... Concerned, no? Uh, water is is a uh, is a scarce resource already. Uh, considering, especially in Metro Manila, as I mentioned, we still have one source of water. Uh, our population has, I think, almost tripled already, di ba? Um, so for next hearing, we will call the water agencies. Next for BSP, Mr. Roberto Quintos. BSP Minda, ma'am. Uh, Secretary Maria Belen Acosta, and then the, we go to the NGOs this time. Uh, si ano muna? Si DB, uh, BSP muna po. Thank you for inviting the BSP, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we will submit our position paper once this has been cleared by uh, Governor Medalla. Our initial comment is the BSP interposes no objection to the proposed legislative measures as this will provide an efficient and integrated infrastructure system to promote sustainable development, spur inclusive economic growth across the country, and generate uh, employment. Uh, we also cite uh, some studies like, uh, according to the ADB, under investment in infrastructure has been identified as one of the major constraints to the Philippine, uh, Philippines' growth. 
Um, lastly, um, I think it's earlier uh, commented already that the, that the list of projects may be revisited as uh, there may be some projects that are already currently uh, ongoing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberto Quintos. Next, we go to um, Minda, Secretary Maria Belen Acosta. Ma'am, you have the floor. Good morning, Mr. Senator. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Secretary Mabel Acosta ng Mindanao Development Authority. At ako rin po ay naatasan na uh, signing minister sa BIMP IAGA. This is Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East ASEAN Growth Area. The Mindanao Development Authority strongly supports the Bill on Comprehensive Infrastructure Development Master Plan. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Senator. This has been long in coming, especially on the part of Mindanao. So, ito pong infrastructure plan, malaki ang tulong at malaki ang impact na mangyayari para sa Mindanao, especially hindi lamang sa roads and highways, but also including water, energy, and information and communication technology because for the longest time, Mindanao has been lagging behind and understandably so because of some strife. But now we have the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. We have relative peace in the land. And come 2025, uh, magiging politically stable na ang barn because of these regular elections. And most of the places that were wrought with insurgency are now insurgency free. So this is a welcome development, Mr. Senator, because we have to sustain the gains of peace in Mindanao. Because if we did not do that, Baka bumalik tayo ulit doon sa dati and we do not want that to happen. Uh, babalikan ko lang po yung sinabi ninyo kanina, how many years do we need to catch up in terms of infra? Uh, we need not look far when we go to Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, which are the closest to us in the Philippines. Malayong malayo na po ang narating nila at napag-iwanan po tayo talaga. And in the national scale, Mindanao has been, uh, sad to say, neglected. Ano po ang data? What are the statistics? For the past, for the period of 2001 alone and 2023 up to 2023, Mindanao only received an average of 15% share of the infrastructure budget. Napakalayo po. But in terms of agriculture, Mindanao has been producing, even before the pandemic, 43% of the agricultural products that is consumed all over the country. Pero kung sana, mas maganda ang infrastructure development sa Mindanao. Mas mataas po sana yun, Senator. Mas mataas pa sa 43%. Unfortunately, ang balik sa Mindanao is only 15% na infrastructure projects. So sana po ay ma-include po ang Mindanao Development Authority sa strategic planning on the national scale so that makikita po natin yung ratio and proportion when it comes to infrastructure. And this will have a very significant impact on the peace and socio-economic development of Mindanao. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Senator. Thank you, Secretary uh, Acosta. Well, uh, I uh, share with you because I I, I, I personally believe that Mindanao is probably the richest among the three islands. No, malaki po ang potential na Mindanao. That's why I've been pushing for sana nga po talaga matuloy na yung Mindanao railway system, improvement of the different um, airports and ports. Now that uh, hopefully magkaroon na talaga na end yung pong secessionist rebellion in the western side and uh, yeah, Hopefully, yung uh, insurgency naman on the eastern side, which has been the stumbling block for Mindanao's development through the years. So hopefully, tama kayo, baka bumalik yan. If we are not able to sustain, if we will not be able to create opportunities. Kaya naman po nagkakaroon ng... The reason why there is, um, there is rebellion, there is insurgency, it's because of poverty. That's the main reason. Madali po hong manghikayat ng mga manggugulo sa lipunan kapag gutom ang uh, pag walang oportunidad. So, be rest assured that we will include Mindanao 
in the master plan because as I mentioned, um, Mindanao is probably, the, ako, I've been traveling a lot. Nakikita ko Mindanao talaga ang pinaka mayaman sa lahat ng ano. Para mag, magtapon ka lang ng buto dyan. Pag kumakain ka, kinabukasan, tutubo na eh. That's how rich. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if I may, Mr. Senator, because you mentioned Mindanao Railway, which has long been a dream of Mindanaoans. Sana po ay matuloy siya, pero doon sa original proposition na two-track and electricity powered. Kasi yun po ang pinupush ng government and private sector. Pero ang na-approve po yata ay uh, one-track tapos diesel or coal yung powers. So sana po mabalik siya doon sa original because napakalaki po ng hahabulin ng Mindanao tapos ang ibibigay na project ay outdated. Sayang naman po. Thank you po. Ay, ay, sige, si Yusik Batan is here. Ay, siguro gusto yung masagotin. I don't think we will, ano, no? hindi naman siguro gagawin natin. I think it will, uh, it will be modern and uh, standard gauge. You know? hindi, tayo mag, hindi na tayo mag-ano ng narrow gauge sa track kasi we need high speed. And I think it will also include, hindi lang po, um, hindi lang commuters to, we will also include cargo. Because that will be the key to, to development, movement of goods and people. People and goods yan dapat eh. Yusik Batan, will you confirm? Kasi single track, charcoal, parang wala nang gumagamit ng charcoal. <laughs> uh, yes po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we confirm. Uh, perhaps, Mr. Chair, a uh, very good point po that this brings up is, uh, and perhaps to be considered po in our infrastructure master plan, is yung ano po natin, yung parameters po natin for decision making in an investment. <laughs> Kasi ngayon po, ang uh, investment decision-making parameter po natin, yung go or no go, meron po tayong uh, tinitingnan na yung economic internal rate of return po natin na I think po doon na uh, nagkaroon ng mahabang discussion with respect to the Mindanao Rail Project. Pero kung titingnan po natin, uh, meron pong ibang factors na pwedeng i-consider like uh, social equity investment. Uh, currently, po, uh, we are not able to quantitatively capture doon po sa ating mga investment parameters. So, one of the in mas, ma, uh, mas makakuha po tayo ng approvals for investments that will distribute uh, our resources to uh, the lesser developed areas po of the country. Uh, uh, as an input, po, perhaps in the master planning process, po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. And I think, ano yan eh, di ba yung Mindanao Railway System, ang plano niya, it's really circumfer circumferential. Talagang iikot sa buong Mindanao. Even the western side, kung saan po may mga strife noon, madadaanan. So that you can expect development. Pati yung insurgency affected areas sa mga sa eastern side, Caraga region, no, madadaanan din. So be rest assured that we will be here to push and make sure na hindi lang ito, hindi ito basta lang magkaroon. Na dapat na... Uh, should be modern, efficient, and uh, of course, uh, environment friendly. No, dapat, uh, again, we will push for both uh, commuter and cargo. Yan po ang magiging, and that will keep, be key to economic development in Mindanao. Thank you, ma'am, for, uh, for uh, stating uh, your agency's position. Next, we go to the NGOs. Um, uh, Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry is the... Um, Represented by uh, Mr. George Barcelons, former president. Um, sir, your uh, position of the, uh, the PCCI. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman, Senator uh, JV, for inviting the private sector to share their thoughts. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the senator for uh, one of the senators who staunchly support the RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive uh, Economic Partnership. And, and since I mentioned that, I think uh, that should be put in the right perspective. Yes, uh, we are entering the 21st century where globalization means competition. We have been uh, ASEAN members for the last more than 50 years. And you know, among the, uh, among the ASEAN countries between us, the trades are all almost 100% uh, tax-free. So that means competition. Now that we have embarked on the RCEP, it means both ways, more market, possible market, and also competitions. And this uh, bill that you're proposing, I think is very timely. Uh, for PCCI, every year we have this business uh, conference. And it so happened 
the theme this time is the Philippine Vision 2015 starts now. So I think it's very timely that we're discussing this uh, issue on a long-term infrastructure. Um, as mentioned earlier by Secretary Costa, that uh, you know Mindanao or we call it Bimpiaga, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, you know, is a uh, growth region. Yes, we are really behind them, especially from the side of logistic cost. Uh, about three weeks ago, I, I had a meeting with the stakeholders, the shippers, the truckers, uh, so on and so forth, not the brokers. Our logistic cost on the average now is running about 20% of our cost. While the other countries are slow single digits, five to six percent. Kaya mahal ang bilhin natin, especially on the agriculture. So this proposal, which really a, covers a broad area, energy, roads, transportation, connectivity, and uh, we are for, for it uh, in the sense that uh, this would give the private sector, you know, uh, more leeway to compete. Madalas eh, ang competition, you just put it on the shoulder of the private sector. When the cost of uh, transportation logistics is beyond us. Okay. When you talk about 20% of logistic costs, that's very, very high. Yeah. So, you know, we are aware that uh, this is a long-term plan. Uh, a long-term plan is really must be well planned. Okay. Uh, you know, any, any project, public works, transportation, uh, planning is easy, but execution is challenging. When you have cost overrun, what does it translate? More burden to the government in their debt, and vice versa, it's more bur burden to the private sector because they have to cough up the tax to pay for the debt. <laughs> so these are all in our minds. We are both in the same team. We want our country to progress, especially under the new administration of President BBM. I've been able to join the entourage of uh, President BBM for the last seven, eight months to Cambodia, Thailand, of course, UN was uh, New York, and lately to China and Japan. And we can see that the administration is warmly welcomed by other countries. Uh, but in the same light, uh, we we know we notice that uh, it is incumbent upon us to make things change. Okay, the transformation that we need. Okay. Uh, talking about connectivity, I think there's a representative here of the ICT, and also uh, Yuse Cabral mentioned also connectivity. We have uh, we're lacking in that aspect, and our cost is quite high compared to the other countries on their subscription on uh, broadband. Okay. So all, all of this uh, dawns to us that uh, we have to, we need an overall mother, uh, master plan. Okay? And that can be long term. Like uh, our theme, Philippine Vision 2050, uh, my tagline is, is if, if, not, if not now, when? Because we're talking about, as mentioned earlier by the chairman, there was many of these plans that were set or planned way back in the, uh, even to the 1980s or 1990s. And here we are, 2023. <laughs> We're still in the planning stage. So uh, we hope that, uh, that uh, going forward, and I read this in your proposal, although it's just a one sentence, no, that the private sector must be included. And rightly so. I think me representing a business organization feels that we must be included in many of these key uh, long-term planning. Uh, we are, many of our chambers, you know, we are about 110 chambers all over the Philippines. And many of our officers regionally, members sila ng Regional Development Council. And as mentioned by Mr. Quinto earlier, uh, that this is uh, important. And I have tried to impress on uh, Secretary R.C. Balisakan of NEDA that out of the 14 uh, members from the private sector, at least a man, one third must come from people who have uh, are stakeholders. Uh, people who are involved in the chamber activities are really stakeholders. They're putting in their good time. 
is, is really um, uh, a, a plan that is must a, a program that must be well planned. Okay. So we we have high hopes for this, uh, Senator. That uh, as I heard all the other panelists who spoke, uh, we're all very supportive of this. Uh, it's just that uh, a law is a law. Uh, it must be planned well. It must be executed well also. So with that, uh, again, uh, thank you very much uh, for um, for inviting the private sector. And uh, I, I won't touch any more on uh, low-hanging fruits, on tourism like that. We know very well infrastructure is very basic to that. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sir George Parcelon. Actually, you summed all of, of the things that we need uh, with your... Uh, with your intervention, no, yung po talagang problema natin. You're correct. If if the business does not grow, we, we government will have not the necessary revenue to uh, to have its uh, social services. And uh, tama po kayo, talagang problem. Nakakal nakakinggit, no. When, when you go to Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, even Thailand, yung investment in the infrastructure has really supported and has really improved so much their business climate, lalo na sa agri. Diba? Yung cost of transport of goods, uh, again, it's really expensive. No? Napakamahal yung sa atin. Napakabigat pala, 20% compared to single digits to other countries. Then, how can we really compete with them, especially yung agri, kung sa cost of transport of goods pa lang, ano na tayo? Ang layo na. Diba? So, thank you very much and I'm be rest assured that we will include dapat masama tag ang private sector in my chambers because you're the stakeholders, kayo nag invest you know the problem. No? So, hopefully we can include you in this uh, in this uh, measure. We will include you in this measure. Yun nga lang, talaga isang mga problema dyan, yung shipping. Because, for example, it's more expensive to ship goods uh, to Mindanao, from Luzon and other parts than going out, outside so Hong Kong or other areas. So that's really a problem that we really have to solve. Hopefully, we, st uh, we still have time. Kailangan natin ayusin. The agencies has to really execute. Maganda yung mga vision. Binibenta tayo ni the president has been doing uh, the rounds, no? selling our country that we are ready. But I think the it is now yung execution part. No? We have to do our part. Hindi yung pwedeng lip service lang. Hindi yung pwede si BBM lang magbibenta nito. Kailangan meron din tayong gawin dito. Uh, if we are 20, 30 years behind in terms of infra development, at least noong time ni President Duterte, in fairness to him, whatever they say, nagsimula yung build, 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 hopefully under pre-BBM. He said he will continue. Makahabol man lang tayo. Hopefully, matanong natin mamaya yung DBM or uh, NEDA. In, ilan percent na ba yung ginagastos natin in infra development? Uh, through the decades, na tama ba ako, Yusek Abral, Yusek Batan? Nasa 2% lang. Na dapat 5% or 8% yan eh. Tama ba? Ng GDP. And we were only spending, tama ba? Uh, si Jonathan Uy, uh, before we were only spending 2 to 2.8%. Am I correct po? 2 to 3%. Sige po uh, actually, Mr. Chair, before the in the 2000s to 2010s, we were just about two to three. But uh, since 2010, we have been reaching about five, five to six. So, so there's considerable improvement. presentation of the national development plan by NEDA, of which uh, President BBM was there also. Uh, in my narrative, I sublimely me mentioned that our growth, our economic growth, which is not too bad compared to the other ASEAN countries, uh, we are 7.6%. But we have to remind ourselves that uh, our growth is basically because of our consumer-driven economy, which depends on remittances. 
Okay. Now, talking long term, that kind of remittances may not hold going forward. Well, at least for the next three, five years, I think we're still okay. Uh, Banco Central uh, Governor Felipe mentioned during the uh, during their anniversary that uh, we're expecting like three, five percent increase. No, so that's good to propel our economy, but that will not always last long. What's in, what's important, especially for our, for the private sectors, is how to create more jobs, how to attract not only foreign investment, but how to make it easier for the local businessmen to expand their business. The market is here. Okay. And how to how to make uh, our OFW, which we 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 uh, put them in a very nice position, Bagong Bayani. But to be honest, I've been uh, of course all of us have traveled to Singapore, Hong Kong, or even to Dubai, where we have our many of our Filipinos working there. And when they're there, they experience the first class mass transport. They experience first class broadband. Pagbalik nila dito, I mean, if I were the one, but, but they, this may yakay. they may not even want to come back. Okay? But I said, moving forward, we may have our workers, OFW, to come back. Okay? They're aging also. And I think it's but fair that for the private sector and the government you know, to really think of their, from their side also, to make it to a level wherein it's acceptable for them. Okay. So all of us have experienced the convenience, di ba? When we go to Singapore, naka-MRT tayo, nagsasabuy tayo, and it's so convenient. <laughs> That's why I, I just said, I'd like to share this with you, but we can keep it to heart that there's a lot that we have to do together. And uh, having this plan, uh, definitely we, we support uh, wholeheartedly. Thank you very much for being so patient to listen to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, you're 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 uh, being honest enough. You're telling it as it is. Yun talagang problema natin, no? And I, uh, at least uh, what you have mentioned that um, tama kayo. We maganda yung ano natin, yung growth natin compared to other ASEAN neighbors this time. But it's really consumer based. If we are able, and uh, you are correct. At uh, least that gives us leeway the next five, ten years, hopefully na yung OFW the remittances will continue but, but we have to develop that would that should give us the time to develop our own production our manufacturing our agriculture buti nga nabigyan pa tayo ng ano eh parang nagkaroon tayo ng liwi because of our OFWs if not talagang wala but um hopefully if we if we improve our infra lower down the cost of transportation improve the agricultural industry Tumigil na silang kaka-import, hopefully. Di ba? Na, na may hasa din yung DA sa kaka-import kasi. No? Because I'm, I'm the author of the Sugarcane Industry Development Act, supposedly to to develop the sugarcane industry. Ang nangyari naman, after the passage, one of the very first laws that I passed, si DA naman, si DA naman in SRA, na may hasa naman ng kaka-import. Nakalimutan na i-develop yung local. So, ang dami talaga problema ng bansa natin. Hopefully, with the infrastructure, with this measure, at least we will set a blueprint already na ano man mangyari, ito na yung talagang susundin natin, uh, especially in the major infrastructure uh, of of uh, of government. Now, whoever sits as president, we will have a blueprint that we will follow. Each president will have their own uh, pet programs, definitely. Siyempre, susundan yan kung ano na iniisip yan. Ano ba may iwan ko sa six years? Siguro yun ang nangyari, Jose Cabral eh. Ah, uh, Yusek uh, Timothy Batan na maraming presidente, ano yung may iwan nila legacy? Eh kasi po itong infrastructure, long term to, talagang hindi na nila makikita yung sinimula nila. By the time tapos yung term nila, hindi, hindi nila makikita matatapos eh. But I think we have to ready to start now. Kaya tayo na iwanan dito ng Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and then Vietnam. Nakakalungkot. Uh, tama ba ako, Mr. George Barcelona? We used to be top tama three. Tama ba, Chairman? We used to be uh, top ako three. Ako naman, ang, ang apprehension ko, baka after six years, talo tayo sa Cambodia eh. <laughs> At yung Laos, eh, talagang Laos tayo. Pag pati Laos, naumpisa na natin. We used to be top five, used, top three pa, naging top five ng ASEAN. Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and then us. Di ba halos magkakadikit yan? 
but now it unfortunately Vietnam has overtaken us in terms of foreign direct investments. Yan ang importante. Agents should put this in mind. Foreign investments, masyado ta binebenta tayo ng presidente natin, but investments are going to other ASEAN countries, even Vietnam. Now Cambodia because they have invested so much in infrastructure. Ang isa sa mga two things, the why for FDIs are not going to asiguro, NEDA can confirm, because of our poor infrastructure and high cost of energy. Di ba? Siguro, that, yan po ang dalawang bagay na talagang kailangan nating ayusin. High cost of energy and poor infrastructure. Kaya po, nagpupunta sila sa ano eh, kasi it's convenient, not only for people, for workers, but for them to do business in other countries. Kasi maganda ang kanilang transpo. Mas mura ang kuryente nila. Yung kanilang internet, mas malakas, mas ano rin, mas reliable. So, these are the things that we really have to fix now. Now that the president is selling us, now that we are saying that we are open to the world, but I think we have to, ano already have a lot of catching up to do if for us to become competitive. For the PPC, PPC, PPP Center, meron pang humabol. So then before I'll ask some questions, then probably we can already adjourn or suspend. Uh, PPCB Center, Director Feroiza Concordia, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members and everyone. Definitely, the PPP Center is uh, um, uh, aligned and uh, we welcome this development because having a master plan would uh, make the investment environment predictable. In a way, agencies would have the list of priority projects and at PPP Center, we espouse long-term mindset, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, and thus uh, the private sectors would have a menu of a uh, list of priority projects in the long term. So uh, we have submitted, Mr. Chair, the position of the PPP Center. Comments were submitted last Friday. And uh, so basically, we uh, would want uh, the uh, your office to consider the, some of the definitions that to be aligned with the existing uh, proposed PPP Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, nice to know that uh, the PPP Center is still active. Now, uh, thank. Uh, there are a lot of programs na PPP na have been successful. Well, I would like to thank, especially buti na lang, sabi ko, may Ramon ang tayo. Otherwise, our Metro Manila's traffic will be really very horrible. That's PPP. No? That's sa San Miguel, yung Skyway, Tiplex, and other um, private uh, initiated, uh, private uh, uh, initiated uh, programs. So nakita ko po lang sa ano nyo, no? the 210 awarded projects, 98 projects in the pipeline. Tama po ito. If you can just submit to the committee list of these projects, so that we will, it can help us also. Yes, we will do that. So active naman po yung PPP Center until now. Still active. I'm happy to hear, to hear that. That a lot of uh, infrastructure and PPP programs are now slowly uh, becoming a reality. Dati kasi PPP, puro PowerPoint presentation. Diba? At least ngayon, na-execute na. Tama ho, ma'am? of uh, awarded projects. Already. So, hindi na tayo puro PowerPoint, ha? Hindi po. That's why we really didn't need this, no? Para tuloy-tuloy po tayo. Okay. So, now, um, the chair will just have uh, some questions uh, for the improvement for the uh, for the TWD to consider in uh, drafting this measure. Tanong ko lang siguro sa NEDA. Very important po si NEDA. Executive Order 257 created the Regional Development Committee with the NEDA as sec Secretary as Chair and the Regional Development Council as one of its members. Ang tanong ko lang po, uh, ASEC Jonathan, if you can answer, does our Regional Development Committee here currently have a Regional Development Master Plan? Meron din ba silang sariling master plans in their RDCs? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, they do at the uh, RDC level. Meron silang... Uh, master planning by sector, almost mirroring the same as we are doing here at the national. But the, uh, the important thing, kasi, Mr. Chair, that we'd like to factor in in what was discussed so far is essentially a lot of the national master plans, even regional master plans, would depend on 
local land use and development plan. So, Mr. Chair, we would submit that one of the considerations in this proposed legislation will be the harmonization with yeah. regard particularly no. land use. Actually, that's what I wanted to ask. Uh, how does NEDA um, consolidate it with the national um, development plan, yung pong nanggagaling sa region? Paano po ang pag-consolidate? Uh, Mr. Chair, ang lumalabas po, uh, at the RDC level, we try to harmonize both the regional development priorities for the infrastructure development at the re with the regional line agencies of the different uh, departments here. No? But the process really is bottom-up. It depends now at the national level what they will choose to prioritize. So, in yung harmonization na ginagawa po namin. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Asik Jonathan. Uy, um, in every administration, a medium-term Philippine Development Plan is always prepared. No, We serve as the government's overall guide in development planning for the next six years. Kung ba ito yung medium-term talaga, yung PDP. So sa bawat PDP na ginagawa, ilang porsyento kaya sa mga planong ito? Meron ba tayong statistics? So how many percent is are being followed by... Uh, by uh, the next administration. Yun po ang ano eh. Kasi in, 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 and what I, we want to identify, yung continuity especially of important and vital infrastructure projects. Kasi nga, ang problema nakakalukot lalo sa local level, paggawa ng kabilang administrasyon, ayaw na ituloy. So we would want to find out uh, how many of these programs are being continued. Meron ba tayong data nun? Uh, by the next administration. Ilan na ilan pagpapatuloy? We'll, we'll, uh, we don't have the data right now, Mr. Chair. We hope to generate that. But you can also ask, Mr. Chair, the different departments here na intro, particularly public works. Siguro yung, kasi yung, we're talking about the local, local, locally funded projects na may annual appropriation. So, yung continuity nun na uh, may be more responded to by the line departments on how they have implemented those uh, appropriations. But let's try to generate the data, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you. Actually, totoo po yun. Um, yun ang nangyayari, especially when there are change of administrations. I'm sure you, Jose Cabral, is very much aware of this. Pag may bagong administrasyon lang, kung sa local level, pag gawa nun dati, ayaw na. Kailangan bago lahat. Tula doon sa amin. Meron kami doon, ano, Yung bago matapos si Marco. San Juan Medical Center, natapos yun ng mother ko nung bago siya maba. And uh, yung Justice, Hall of Justice, 2019, laman na lang kulang. Pero tinapos naman siya ngayon lang para gawing project na nung bago administration. <laughs> Sayang yung three years, di ba? Na nagamit na sana. May mga ganung ganung kalala eh. Pero I think may mas malala pa sa mga may change of administration. So... Ah, uh, siguro si Cabral, anong tingin mo dito? Yung ilan kaya yun ay pagpapatuloy? Halimbawa may pagbabago ng administrasyon, how many percent are being uh, continued by the next administration? Mr. Chair, yung Philippine Development Plan po ng bawat uh, administrasyon, and I think NEDA will concur with this, ay general statements po to ng assessment kung nasa na po yung current, well, at least the chapter on infrastructure kasi marami naman pong chapter yung uh, Philippine Development Plan. Uh, ang ang uh, chapter po ng infrastructure is on the chapter 12 of the Philippine Development Plan. So, ito po, um, bawat PDP po, ina-assess niya kung nasaan na po yung current infrastructure following that the last term or uh, the past immediate past administration at uh, kung ano po yung mga na-achieve na nung past administration where is now the benchmark at yun po yung susundin kung na-achieve po yung mga targets at kung meron pa pong balance yun po yung ipaprioritize ng bawat ahensya so uh, the, yun pong Philippine Development Plan po ay yun yung strategy uh, para po maka makapag uh, plano ang bawat ahensya ng mga programa nila consistent not only with uh, uh, ngayon po yung eight point agenda ng Pangulong Marcos kung naalala nyo po yung KBB, KPRRD 10 plus 1 yung agenda niya kasi yung 1 po yata at 10 plus 0 kasi peace and security yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang primordial uh, overarching 
uh, goal. Uh, ngayon po, food security po ang programa at prioridad ni Pangulong Marcos kasama po yung pag-reduce ng transport logistic. Kaya po nakatuon tayo lahat sa mga proyekto na mga pagbababa ng mga cost no, uh, ng ating mga products and services. Having said that, Mr. Chair, sa public works and highways po, uh, sabi nyo nga yung mga big ticket projects, tuloy-tuloy naman po. Uh, kasi yan po ay dumaan sa proseso ng NEDA board approval, mga PPP po, o, yung mga ODA projects namin, dumaan naman po sa mga feasibility study. At uh, ito po ay tuloy-tuloy lang. Ang nangyayari nga lang po ay uh, pag, uh, pag uh, sinama namin sa expenditure program, medyo nagkakaroon po ng mga modification or changes. Sabihin na natin drastic reduction. Pagdating po ng General Appropriations Act, um, Nire-respeto naman po ng ahensya yung uh, proseso ng budget, no? but uh, we would want to uh, emphasize that yung mga sinasabit po sa bawat ahensya as room sa National Expenditure Program, which is the President's Priority Budget, ayun po yung tutugon dun sa mga continuing priorities. Um, again, that said, yun pong mga local priorities naman po na alam naman natin na makakatulong din naman sa mga regional at local development. Uh, yan po ay ang prioridad namin dyan ay yung mga may RDC endorsement. So yung mga RDC endorsed project po, yan ang inuuna naming priori priority. So uh, kung hindi wala pong RDC endorsement, that becomes, you know, at the bottom of the priority. So uh, ang, uh, we will require lalo na po yung mga big ticket projects to have an RDC endorsement na sana dumaan din sa proseso ng infrastructure committee evaluation ng bawat RDC at uh, ito po ay tinitignan nila sa kabuuan ng kanilang mga plano at programa para makatugon sa national development goals. So, ganun po yung process. But we understand, Mr. Chair, that when we plan, hindi lang naman po bottom-up or top bottom. Meron din naman pong uh, lateral kasi may mga kahit naman po si nung uh, Juan de la Cruz ay makakapag, uh, makakapag request naman po kung na, sa tingin niya ay mga ngailangan ng prioridad pero idaan lang po sa proseso. Thank you, Mr. Cabral. Actually, what you said is really that's what really happens. No? Kaya nga gusto natin talaga while we respect also kasi may mga Yung uh, GEA, uh, there are parochial concerns that are really also needed. Pero yun lang ang gusto na natin na for you, the real major infra na sana wag ma-disrupt. No? Alam ni Yusik Timo dito na last budget hearing, I, I fought for the uh, retention, lalo na ng buong uh, NSCR, na which, which was the budget was cut in half. Sabi ko magiging problema ito. Because yung right of way, yung relocation, uh, yung dam po gagamitin yun eh, di ba? Tapos, while we are already paying for the loan, uh, which will be used for the, for the, ano mismo, yung construction mismo, and, uh, and the equipment, and others, we will already shoulder kung madudelay ito. So, we have to fight for that. So, yun yung iniisip ko, Yusek Abrael, very revering and Yusek Bata, na although, of course, we understand yung pong mga regionally endorsed uh, local projects na which are also needed, kaya lang sana magkaroon tayo na basta na sa master plan, dapat pag ma-disrupt. You know, para tuloy-tuloy, ano mo, nung nagsalita si Mr. George Barrison nung kanina, nalung, parang nakakalungkot eh. That's the real state of our our uh, business right now. Talagang very dependent dun sa cost of transport. They agree, we cannot really compete until we are able to fix our infrastructure. Yung cost of transport natin, 20% against single digit, napakabigat po talaga. So not unless we are able, tama kayo, uh, yung sec, priority ni President BBM, uh, Asik Jontan, is food security. But we will not be able to realize or be competitive unless we are able to fix these uh, small things, yung infra. Kailangan may ayos natin so we can lower down the cost of transport of goods. Tama po, no? Mr. George Barcelona, kasi yung kahit mga, anong suporta natin, hindi natin maibababa ang cost of production. Oo eh. oh, nga. Chairman, yung sinabi mo kanina, all the other countries that we see, no, they have already been doing this the last 10, 20 years. Kaya lamang sila. But uh, kaya we have to start. So it's, it starts now. Thank you. We have to start yesterday.
uh, actually talaga because of the catching up na gaya ng nabanggit kanina na na ni Asik Jonathan we are catching up that that's why we have to increase yung yung spending natin sa infra hindi lang dapat na ideal 5% kung pwede natin ni 8 kasi we are catching up no na iwan tayo ng Indonesia ng Malaysia uh, Thailand especially no uh, siguro si Asik Tam Yusik Tamano can attest to this it's very easy seamless ang pagpunta na mga turista na magaling Europa, pupunta ng Thailand kasi pupunta ng Pataya, Chiang Mai, kung saan-saan. Very seamless and convenient. Tama ba, Yusek? Uh, we agree, Mr. Chairman. In fact, we are uh, the direction of Secretary Frasco is for our visitors if they can you know land in the destination. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, directly. That's why um, Maktan Cebu is very helpful because they uh, help decongest uh, Naya and uh, Secretary Frasco is also moving for the uh, for more operations at Clark also to decongest um, uh, Naya and if there are incidents like what happened a few months back no or in the future then we can have uh, another airport nearby which can absorb these um, uh, these flights so um, we are working closely with the OTR um we in fact created a group just for clark and we are in fact going to have a special meeting to be held at clark so that we can convince the community the community and the national agencies will work together to um to improve and add more flights to clark to service the four regions uh, of northern luzon mr chairman thank you this actually probably yung long short-term solution na IA is really a mess right now kasi lahat po nang pupunta pa na IA. Ang nangyari po kasi Clark was already active ano noon we had so many flights before but during the pandemic understandable kinat nila bumalik sa na IA. Ang problema ayon nang bumalik ng Clark ng airlines. I hope the OTR can uh, put their foot uh, down and uh, force them to use it because pag mga north naman Quezon City mas madali sa Clark eh. Di ba? And I, I'm hoping because North-South Commuter Line, New Sigbatan, nakikita ko nando na malapit na po sa Clark. Di ba? Nando na yung development. So, Metro Manila, uh, Clark can now function really as the second airport to Manila. Paglalo na pag natapos na yung North-South Commuter Line. Di ba? Or also yung Dabao and other uh, maximize. Sige, New Sig. Uh, we agree, Mr. Chairman. In fact, uh, uh, our secretary met with uh, her Indonesian counterpart, no? And we brought up also, uh, in our meeting with uh, the officials of uh, Indonesia, we urged them to strengthen the BIMP Iaga to have more flights to Davao and also uh, Sambuanga City. Because um, we feel that it's a little bit of a kalakas no, tulad noon. And with the uh, BIMP Iaga under ASEAN no, and Indonesia, maybe we can you know, um, revive this. Uh, it's ongoing, but we need to strengthen it. So uh, Davao... Davao Airport is included in our um, memorandum of agreement between DOT and DOTR. No, uh, that is um, Davao uh, Terminal Two and uh, the Cebu Port, uh, Seaport, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sama niya, uh, may mga international ano ito, Lawag is an international airport. Used to be very busy, di ba? Eh, mga dapat tignan because Ilocos region is really a beautiful region. One of the, the most beautiful. Na sayang dapat direction na don instead of Punta pa sa Naiya. E dito, alam mo rin sa Naiya, daming pag napunta dyan, nagiging lokol, ewa ko, ibang hangin dyan eh. Taga-immigration, taga-BOC, pag napupunta na Naiya, parang nasisira ang ulo eh. Di ba? Yung mga sibuyas, kaliit-liit, smuggling, smuggling daw. Eh yung mga uh, puti container, nagbubulag-bulagan sila. Tapos yung 2, 2 kilogram, 1 kilogram, gagawin smuggling. Na is really a problem. It's a mess. So we have to take advantage of other, probably in coordination with the OTR, make use of Iloilo International Airport, uh, Bohol inter is an international airport supposedly. Kung kailangan lang i-upgrade, nandiyan naman kami para tumulong for equipment, di ba? Uh, in Lawag International Airport, Davao is an international airport, di ba? So marami tayong mga pwedeng maging gateway. Kaya nag problema talaga sa NAIA, everybody, every, dyan ang hub eh, no? ang hirap. Nakakaya, 2 to 3 hours, hihinga ka pa ng diploma ng isang gagong immigration officer. Diyos ko, hindi na nakakatulong itong mga tao to Ano bang may, ah? Meron bang hangin dyan sa airport? Pag BOC, BI, 
BID, pag napunta dyan, yumayabang eh. Sarap pagbabatokan minsan eh. Di ba? Nakakasira eh. Because the airport is the first and last impression. And then you see these people doing these things. Di ba? So, sorry ah. Nakakaano tayo. Kailang it's really affecting our tourism and our business climate. Doon na lang sa, ano, sa infrastructure flagship projects. Uh, you see, Jonathan, uy, siguro at masensya na because it's all need. Ah. It's very vital in our... Uh, Drafting of the measure. What are the criteria set by the NEDA board in determining the prioritization? Yan po, siguro, of the infrastructure flagship projects of government. Uh, Mr. Chair, as explained by our NEDA Secretary, Secretary Balisakan, the nung present po namin yung IFP, we emphasize continuity of policy, which was actually what everybody wanted. That what we've started, we will continue because these are actually... Uh, this is actually spending good money after into good projects still. The other criteria is also with regard to maximizing private uh, partnership with the public sector, no? particularly for the large infrastructure projects. And then finally, the main, con uh, main input will also be responsiveness to regional priorities, which are already been actually more or less established. Now, uh, may I emphasize lang for everybody's appreciation, Mr. Chair, which is critical in this proposed legislation, is the need to consider yung continuing updates kasi we have to recognize new priorities, technology, technology improvements, particularly in ICT. Kaya nga, may yung concern na I, 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 magkaroon ng itemization, May not be ideal kasi if we were to change it, do we need to go back again for legislation? So probably we should have some parabang uh, provisional uh, provision in the in the law that this may be updated time to time based on the priorities of the administration to come. To administrations to come. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Isaac Jonathan. Thank you very much for your uh my intervention no napakali ang bagay nito uh, so that they have a better understanding as we have another hearing probably for the water agencies and then probably go into the may on that may note lang po no 2019 world economic forum global competitiveness report the philippines rank 102nd out of 141 countries in overall transport infra tama tama po ito uh, this is confirmed, no? So, that means we really have a lot of catching up to do. Medyo nakakalungkot pakinggan yung state, eh. State of business because of the poor infra. But I'm hoping that hopefully with this, magtulong-tulong tayo para ma-improve mo natin. Again, we have to catch up. Uh, 30 years ang kailangan natin. 20 years probably ang kailangan natin habulin. Recently, President Marcos approved 194 impact infrastructure plan. Flagship projects worth nine trillion. From the 2023 list of IFPs, we have 67 ongoing and approved of implementation. For implementation of IFPs, most of the projects are funded through uh, ODA, no, uh, Overseas Development Assistance. 15 projects are funded under JA, and the rest are under PPP uh, arrangement. From the list of the Flagship projects, what is the total amount or percentage siguro, uh, of ODA and what is the budget needed under GA and for PPP? Kung anong tingin nyo, uh, siguro siya, si Jonathan, uh, si Cabral, can, ano kung, on how we will be able to uh, go into that direction of catching up. Yung, amount, yung ODA, siguro percentage na lang po, gano'ng kalaki. ODA, marami rin. You know, ang NSCR is ODA, Subway. Uh, may we, may yes. we submit the data, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I don't have that specific. Ah, sige po. Pati yung, uh, you have the plan, no? Yung pinaka-plan, yung, yung supposedly yung uh, uh, presented by the board, yung yung Philippine Development Plan. Yes, Mr. Also, Chair. Also, it includes that we'll have a better appreciation. Yeah. Actually, Mr. Chair, we're finalizing the public investment program. All the agencies are aware of that. That will provide uh, more, ano, more uh, detail when we finalize it in terms of how we plan to both what are the magnitudes, what are the funding strategies and the like. But we'd just like to flag one thing no, na, to everybody's appreciation. When, if we become an upper middle income country, we may have to graduate to 
less concessional development assistance. Kaya nga we have to have alternative funding strategies. So, ang lumilitaw po, baka we cannot rely on the usual very concessional na funding ng Japan or let's say the yeah, other developing countries can. Part of the discussion is also looking at a financing strategy. So, we are suggesting that uh, the legislation, if it will pass, will also look at providing more flexibility to the executive and all the partners, the private sector, and accessing different kinds. Uh, I think green financing is mentioned, but there are other forms, by Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We, we would highly submit that uh, finance be, the Department of Finance be provide, uh, providing that kind of strategic direction for this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Ayun na lang, isa na lang po, uh, what is the status of yung Ambition 2040? The administration uh, also adapted this program? Uh, the present Philippine Development Plan is actually a continuing stages approach you know, for each administration for the Ambition 2040. Uh, we are now midway, in effect. And uh, I think uh, Mr. George Barcelona of PCC, uh, I as already mentioned a very critical element, which is the complementation of the Philippine Development Plan with regard to the private sector. So I, we would expect probably that we harmonize kami in the near future within this administration on the, on the new, especially after COVID. Uh, just to say that the COVID episode has really put everything backward. A lot. So we really need to reorient so probably a lot of our development targets and strategies. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We, we, we hope to answer your question on that, but we need to, I need to get yes. back to my principles. What Thank you. Here. Thank you, Asik John Tanui. Thank you very much. Actually, very sure, helpful. Man. But we need also your other more uh, inputs. Yes, uh, Mr. George. May, may I add to what uh, Asik just mentioned about the development plan? Now, if you look at it, actually, uh, the development plan actually is very job-centric, creation of jobs. Okay? That is the bottom line. But uh, to create jobs, as we have been discussing for the whole morning, infrastructure, energy connectivity is very crucial. And uh, we, we, we think that, uh, that uh, for the execution, that's the challenge that we face. So we, we are, I, I think just hearing from everybody, we're all in agreement that uh, this is needed and we have to we have to take uh, the initiative of making it happen thank you actually before we end i think tama ko kayo eh we tama rin si Yusek Asik John Tanoy we really have to harmonize everything now diba kasi lahat magkakakonekt eh yung business konektado agri konektado sa infra si DSWD somehow also konektado kasi Nasanay na tayo sa ayuda-ayuda. Dapat magka-exit plan yan. Na dapat ang ganun natin is job and livelihood, business. Kasi ako, honestly, when I, I alam ni Sir Mayor George Barcelo, resident namin yan ever since, ay, hindi ako masyado sa ayuda-ayuda eh. Di ba? Yung mga tawag dito. Uh, uh, Dole out. I am more for investments to create jobs, business to grow, for job generation. So, kailangan siguro isama na rin natin dyan yung DSWD later on, yung dapat magka-exit plan. As the infrastructure is improving, hopefully business will improve, production will improve, dapat si Ayuda, dapat dahan-dahan, i-ano na natin yan. Di ba? Hindi naman pwedeng buong buhay natin na ano lang tayo, ang tao maasa sa Ayuda tuwing eleksyon. Naging magastos na eleksyon. Alam ni Sekmari, Mabel to dahil ano to eh, dating kunsihal, di ba? Ma'am, mas mahal ngayon ang eleksyon kaysa dati, nagsimula tayo. Tama ba, mali? Iba na eh, no? Dahil, because of the ayuda-ayuda, nasana yan eh. So, Kailangan magkala tayo ng exit plan dyan. Isama na rin natin. I, siguro, while we, we look at the improvement of infra, production, di ba, business uh, to grow, Dapat isama na rin natin yung ano nun. Yes, um, Sir George. So, I, I was just, yung sinabi mo na ayuda, when I think about the CCT, no? uh, sa ngayon, it's still a very big ticket item. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I think 80 to 90 billion pesos. Okay? Uh, kaya we are, from the private sector side, uh, we hope that uh, there can be, aside from that, no? because that's the four piece, na mas malaki ang investment natin sa skill sets training. Yeah, that's also very important. 
uh, I've been talking to the various uh, ambassadors, uh, European countries. No, sabi ko, ang kailangan namin, we don't need low-paying jobs. We need high-paying jobs. But it's important for you to collaborate with, with us to bring, uh, to bring our technical skills higher. Okay? Uh, and this is something that uh, on the private sector we're initiating, uh, talking to the various uh, embassy, targeting certain firms for them to invest in the training. I, I've been telling Secretary Pascual now we should invest, we should incentivize training. Uh, and, uh, you know, marami mga kumpanya, every so many years end of life eh, bibili sila ng bagong makina, like NC machine for tooling. So I'm trying to convince them now, why don't you uh, bring your old equipments, no, to the Philippines to be used for training. Anyway, the uh, it still can be used. Why they have to upgrade is because of competition or productivity. But the skill itself in those machines can still be used. So this is what we're trying to, private sector trying to initiate uh, also in connection with TESDA, with uh, General uh, Danilo Cruz. So this is our little way of contributing uh, for the overall plan of our economy for us to sustain and also the inclusivity on the development. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, there's been a very productive morning, I would say, no, na two hours, but uh, we have covered a lot of things. Um, hindi masyadong ano itong ano to. Alam niyo naman sa, sa, sa bansa natin, pag hindi, pag positive, wala masyadong ano. Napansin niyo, wala masyadong camera. Pero mas okay na yan kasi we can work better. Di ba? Because if you have cameras all over, iba yung action natin. Iba sa sabi ni Jose Cabral. Siyempre, naku, play, di ba? I, I, I'm, I'm happy with that because although this is, may not be very controversial, a controversial or a popular measure, I think this is the plan that will really, that is needed to improve our economy, our infra, our livelihood, our services, everything. So I'd like to thank everyone, especially the uh, agencies, the departments for being here. Very, ano po, Mr. George Barcelon, your insights have been very helpful. Uh, Asik John Tanoy of NEDA, again, thank, very important po yung inyong mga uh, information that uh, was given today and uh, hopefully you can submit all others. Sana mapasya na po natin to. Hopefully you can push, all push for this because this is what we really need to harmonize everything in government. Nung binabanggit niyo, uh, Mr. Barcelon, nalulungkot ako eh, pero that's a real state that we have right now. Kasi kunay-konektado eh. Agri, production, social services, it's all boils down to better infrastructure talaga. And opportunities. Just, just Mr. Chairman, I'm here, I seldom attend really public hearing. Okay. Uh, I'm here because we invited you, I think three years ago, to be one of the speakers in the infrastructure. And I was impressed. I was impressed. The senator knew what he was talking about. That's why when I saw the invitation, I said I would personally attend just to share my little thoughts or little experience that I have. So thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that you remembered also because I, I love you po, before I end. Nung nasa Congress pa ako, in the House, I was already there. I was there. I remember delivering about two three village speeches on the railways and infra. That was 2010. But at that time, hindi pa masyadong traffic. Alam mo naman sa house, wala nakikinig dun eh. Di ba? Nato, iba, natutulog pa. Pag naisig kayo, nag-speech na lang ako. Okay. But I, I was already, I already foresaw this. And I, I alam nila, Yusek Timothy Batanyan, Yusek Cabral, I've been really pushing for infrastructure development because I, feel, I believe this will really uh, be the cat catalyst for economic growth. Ito yung magiging backbone natin eh. Di ba? So, at least now, I'd like to thank all the agencies present. Thank you for your support. Kailangan talaga natin gawin to again to harmonize and to coordinate everything. For the govern for the administration uh program to succeed, kailangan talaga ito. The president is selling the country, pero kailangan gawin din natin yung part natin, di ba? Okay? So with no more matters to discuss, discuss the this hearing is now suspended. Thank you.